Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to OLC Garage. If you're new here, this is my 2013 Fiat 500R bar that we're currently putting a new engine and bigger turbo on. It's almost done. But we've come to the part, we're wrapping everything up, and I have to rebuild my axles. I've got one axle missing over here, and another axle missing over here. The predicament I'm in with my axles is that I couldn't find new axles, so the best option is, as you can tell from the title, rebuilding them. This is the current state of my axles. We pulled them off like this without that stub part because it's just very stubborn to get out, and I don't want to really damage it anything over there so we kind of just pulled off the boot pulled them out like this so we have our tripod bearings and what is supposed to be our boots this is how bad the condition of my boots are this one's completely torn out this boot also torn apart i don't even know where the other piece went it's just gone these back parts aren't leaking too bad but we're going to rebuild them anyway because i ordered the parts for both this is the outer boots the boots that go over here like this and the smaller ones are the ones that go on this side like that and that side goes into the stub, you install the axle like that. I also have clamps that we need, four of these big ones, four of these small ones, and I've also got two packs of grease to fill these up with once we're done rebuilding them. So with that being said, first thing is to take apart your axle. Now yours might not be as in bad condition as mine is, but mine is this bad. What we're gonna do is take off that clamp first and then pop off this tripod bearing and then do the same thing over here. Pop this clamp off, clean that whole area and then get to reinstallation. But first let's get to dismantling and cleaning. As for tools, we have to go to a parts store to get a CV joint plier. So what this thing does is it makes the clamp go from loosey-goosey to tighty-tighty, you know? Clamp it, put it in its ridges, and then you use this to tighten it down completely. So while we were there, I also found this. So I was like, you know, if I get this tool, then I can pop off the bearings and put them back on. So those are the two tools I have. The first thing I'm going to do to make everything a lot easier is clean off the abundant amount of grease on this tripod bearing so that it doesn't get everywhere. Oh, there's going to be so much. Oh my god. Yep. You know, the only reason these axles are still in shape is because I decided against. So if, again, if you're new here, I blew the motor in my Barth 500. Due to multiple negligences, you don't got to talk about why or how it happened. But as a final send off, we were going to do a burnout in it. And I decided against it because I thought I, I'm going to rebuild these axles. And if I blow them, I'm just going to have to source and buy brand new ones. So I decided against it and we're rebuilding them now. Okay. This axle bearing has less grease on it than before. I have to remove this old boot now. I'm just gonna cut it off because I don't see uh, any other way of doing that. You can break that part, that's garbage. A good old blade. One slit should be enough, yep. Just to rip it off, just like that. That's that old boot removed. There's a piece of the boot still on here with the clamp, so I'm gonna cut that off and remove that. God, it takes so much force to cut these, man. There we go. This thing should come off now. Just bend it. And this part right here, this ring, is part of the old axle boot. I'm gonna cut that off as well. That was accidentally too deep, but Gets the job done. So now I'm gonna pop this snap ring off the bearing and take the bearing off. The snap ring plier comes with these little pieces for it to go in there so I can grip into your snap ring. So I'm gonna use that. You got two little pokey thingies. Can you focus camera? Hold it. You probably shouldn't touch it. Don't touch it without a nap or something. Good. We have a vice behind the camera. You should probably use that, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I put our axle in the vise. Snap ring is on. I put our little tool in through here like that. I extended it and popped it off the axle. I don't know why the camera wasn't recording, but... And then you should be able to just pop this off, although it's never that easy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a hammer and like hammer this bearing off. I cleaned up the bearing, I cleaned up the part that it slides on, the part that the boot sits on. So now I'm going to flip this around and take this boot off, do the same thing, and then we're going to get to loading it with grease and putting the boots on. The axle nuts on our cars as well, I mean if you have a Fiat 500 bar or a Fiat 500 in general, um, the axle nuts are one-time use, so you have to get new ones after you take these off. Adam destroyed both of ours in general, so we're going to have to get new ones anyway. <sighs> these clamps are more strong than they should be. Oh my god, man. Just 
so annoying. There we go. Stupid clamp is removed. I mean, at no point you're doing Don't well. stab yourself. It's like, how, why is that so much work, bro? Second thought, I'm gonna cut this off instead of trying to slide it down. Adam, come here. Mm -hmm. Quickly, pick up the axle out of here and I'm gonna try to- Where do you want it? Actually, let's do it over this thing. I just made the mess I was trying to avoid. This axle wasn't leaking, but you know, if you're gonna rebuild it, you might as well rebuild both sides. So we've got all this grease to deal with now, which I'm gonna empty out and clean. I should be removing the old grease out of here, but I don't feel like dealing with that. So I'm just gonna pack the boot with new grease, put it on top. So that would be this. Okay, so I have two packets of grease for four boots. I guess I'm just gonna put half and half. Pretty sure I used half of what I had just now. So now we gotta clamp this boot back up. The boot I've put up to here, I'm just, everything I do, I compare it to the other axle. That's, this is where mine is at. That looks straight to me. It's not straight actually, oops. I'm gonna try to get this thing straight on the axle and then clamp it down. I'm gonna be entirely honest, I don't know how to use this clamp, so. Although I'm pretty sure it's got these hooks right here. Hold on, which, yep, right there, there's the hooks. You slide it into the hole, and then you clamp it from here with that tool that I got, and then it hooks it how it's supposed to be. I'll slide this over here. He's gonna wrap it around, just like this. Okay, can you cooperate? Pressing it down so it can catch on something. Huh. Have it held down tightly, wrap it around, and get it hooked on. I feel like that's loose though. And we cannot be having loose clamps. I'm still loosen it though. God, that is annoying. Okay, everything is nice and clean. That should help a little bit, right? This is by no means a how-to. This is me trying to figure out how to do this. I'm gonna pre-circle it, I guess. I'm gonna bend it so that it helps a little bit. You know, maybe I should have done that to start with. God damn it, why am I so retarded? I made it a smaller circle. Wow, that is so much easier to deal with. So I, I pre-bent it to try and help get it around the, the boot. And it kind of helped a little bit with my rubber gloves. I guess they're slippery, but with grease, everything's gonna be slippery. I tried getting as tight as I could and I hammered it down to like grab three holes. And I think it's, it's moderately tight. It's not really tight. I don't know if I can get it more than that. I have three clamps. So I think I have, oh wait, no, no, I need all three. Damn, I can't mess this up. Well, what I'm gonna try to do is get this thing as tight as possible, and then I'm gonna use the this tool right here and clamp it down once I'm done. That tool actually crunches it down quite a bit, this one. Axle is sealed on there pretty tight now. What the tactic is, or what I've figured out, try to bend the clamps, pre-bend them, so in their circular shape, and then try to hold this side down. I actually used a tiny screwdriver. I used this and I put it in one of the holes like to hold the first side down and I looped it around. And then I took the side that I looped around, pulled it as hard as I could, got these hooks into the holes, hammered it down, and then with the tool, crunched this up and it's, it's in now and it's pretty tight. So I'm gonna do that same thing for this small one right here. And then this one, same process. I'm gonna put the boot on, then I'm gonna do the bearing. And now these axles did not get pulled normally. We pulled them off from the boot. The CV stub is still in the transmission. So I'm gonna have to do the boot, the tripod, and then we're gonna have to install this or get it close to install and then I'm gonna pack the grease in there. But if you have the stub out, then you can just do that same process like this. Boot, tripod bearing, grease, and then attach it. If you pulled it off like I did, if you don't know how we pulled this off, you can check out our uh, disassembly video. That'll be in the corner. First thing is doing this clamp. The smaller size is actually proving to be a little bit more difficult. This is how the clamp came. This is what I turned it into. Sliding this on pretty bent. And then final set. using the clamps malleability helps also. So like I'm bending it into place as I'm getting it wrapped tight around just like that. See that? Bend it, bend it, and then try to get into the hooks. 
it's into the hooks now. My hands are probably covering that, but now the clamp, it's loose. But when I use the tool to smush this together, it's gonna tie in a pretty good amount. So we're gonna do that right now. Gotta get this tool lined up properly. Tie in this as much as possible. It's a little half compressed. Fully compressed will be like this. Just like that. That's tight. That clamp is not going anywhere. Neither is this boot. Hopefully. Both these sides are tying down with grease in them. So you gotta repeat that process on the other axle and on this side, which I will do right now. As for boot positioning, as I was saying before, I'm just looking on my old axle where the, oh my God, we just dropped grease on the desk, bro. I'm just looking where they were sitting on the old one. So I copied it for this. If yours is in such bad condition that it's somehow ripped off, there's a little ridge here. This ridge right here is where the small boot goes. This one, I just judged off a little bit lower than the sticker. Kind of messed it up, but this little stubby thing, I don't know what the proper term for this is. I just copied how much of the straight part it was on but you can tell where the boots have been sitting so again just copy your old axle and you should be good i'm using this boot to pre-bend it put this on the end slide that in so now that i've got into the holes i'm going to hammer it down just a little bit to get the hooks aligned up now i'm going to use the tool can they see it yes they can huh yes like that. That's nice and tight. This boot's not going to go anywhere. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. I'm going to put the tripod bearing in this. The tripod bearing has a flat surface and that's where your snap ring is going to sit. The opposite side is concaved a little bit. The concave side goes into the axle and the snap bearing side goes on the outside. This is not going to go in easily, so I'm going to get a socket that fits the surface of the bearing and then hammer it in a little bit. Ah, good. I'm going to hammer it with a 24. I'm hammering it so I can get just enough space to put the snap ring on top. That would be right there. Okay, so you can see that tiny bit that's still left over there. I'm going to put the snap ring over that. Okay. Oh my God, it wasn't in focus. Well, it slid in. So this is what the finished product should look like. Tripod bearing is in, snap ring is securing all of it. I initially had the head of the snap ring like underneath the bearing and it was clearing, but just for safety, I moved it so that it's not in the way of anything like that. That's how that looks. When we go to install it on the car, we'll put this into our wheel and then this part is gonna go into the transmission. So we're gonna have basically, we're gonna slide this over like that, pack it with grease and then attach it to the stub on the transmission and clamp it down. But for now, I gotta do the other axle, prepare it just like this. And what is this, is it like? No, this is, I don't know. Okay, that's the boot with all the grease off. Chill, Aki. Got one job. All clean. Looks that already. Okay. Wow, this cutter makes it so easy. You just cut the top off and boom, it's gone. That's that. That boot is entirely removed. Now I gotta deal with the part that has all the grease in it. Not fun. I'm just gonna cut the two clamps, split the boot down the middle, so it splits open like that, pick up the axle through it, and then just hopefully all the grease just stays in there. And I can just throw it out like that, clean up whatever I have to do, and then just do like I did the last one. God. There's probably such a simple way of getting these off, and people are probably laughing at me while watching this. There we go. I prefer breaking them off so I can take my anger out on them. I'm gonna pry the part that you tighten down with the screwdriver up a little bit so it's easier to cut. I made enough of a gap right here to slip the cutter through hopefully and just cut it like that. Wow. That, that is definitely how you should do it. Stuck the screwdriver in there pried it up so that there was a gap, kind of like that, and then I just cut it from the top. The one band that I made space, I cut it and it just completely popped off. So I guess I found the easy way of doing it, right after complaining. Oh God, there's grease oozing out. I'm just gonna pry it up with the screwdriver so I can keep cutting it. 
clamps like loosely fit it up. Okay, axle boot is split in half. Now I just gotta slide this axle out without making a mess. Pick it up, you have to pick it up, you have to pick it up. There you go. This thing out. Okay. Pick it up quick. Okay. There we go. That wasn't so bad. All cleaned up. Just gotta put a boot over that. <laughs> There we go. Gotta get that clamp on now. How fun. I just cooked our AC with brake clean. I wouldn't believe that to be in. I didn't put grease. Oops. Uh, Aki, do me a favor. I'm gonna hold this open. Just dump some grease in here. All of it? All of it. That was a good amount of grease, right, Aki? Yeah, it was a lot. There's still OD in here, gang. But you said that. I had to do a shirt. You want to squeeze the rest in there? Uh, okay. I don't, I'm pretty sure I used the right... Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Aki, let's get this thing on. That seals the deal. Just kind of hammer that down one more time. Make sure the hook is in there. Give it another tighten. Oh God. What? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So I messed up that clamp. You guys could see that. I don't know if my face was in there, but I was pretty distraught because I made a pretty dumb mistake. If I had just double checked like I double checked every other one that I did, that wouldn't have happened. But I used another one that I had and it's all good now. But we're one short, so we're gonna have to go to a parts store to find that, but that's no biggie. And if this video is being redundant, when I tell, when I keep saying what I did or what I didn't do, if it's coming off as redundant, it's only because I, I'd rather show my mistakes and have people benefit from that than not showing it at all. Every single time I do a clamp, I'll probably show it, see the mistakes that I made. Hopefully that helps you guys. This divot is for the boot, and when I put the boot on, just one of my observations is that I feel like this boot has to stretch quite a bit to be where it has to be. You know, like, if I put this all the way on here like this, into its divot, when we put this on the transmission, it's going to have to stretch a fair amount, like, almost like that. It's literally going to have to stretch like that, but I guess maybe when you have these things clamped down fully, it does a good job of sealing, and that's how it should be. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to pre-bend this to the size of the axle. like this okay that should be good I'm gonna slide that onto our boot slide the boot back where it has to be okay I can feel it hooked underneath I'm so sorry because that does not help the camera but okay so I wrapped it all the way down I got it hooked underneath just like that all right Pre-bending helps a lot. With the hammer, I'm just gonna give it some little taps. Just to make sure they're seated. And I've tapped these against wood just to make sure I was good while I was tapping, like I wasn't bending them or anything. Before they bent, they put a hole in our wood bench, so should be fine. You can kinda like half tighten it before you fully tighten it just to see if you're seated properly so you can double check and not mess it up like I did on the one before. So that's, that's a little tightened. Make sure it's good all the way around. It is seated properly. So now I'm going to tighten this thing all the way. We went to a parts store and we got a dormant clamp kit. It comes with a small clamp and a big clamp. So we're going to see if this fits. Concave side in, flat side out. Gotta get the impact. Already made the socket. Yeah. 
this axle is assembled. Now all you have to do is throw on the car, which because we have that clamp now, we can do. So the game plan is to stick the, the side of the axle that goes into the hub, and then from here, we're gonna load half the packet of grease into there, and then put the boot on top, and then use that clamp that we just got, and tighten it down. So here's the clamp. Or do you want to use the one that we just got to like, you know, test? Uh, I like the suspense, obviously. Let's use it on the other side. Yeah, you know what? Let's use the one that we know is going to work first. <laughs> okay, got it. I think this might have to just, I think that side has to go in first. Okay, okay. Oh, no. calm down. I can't see what I'm doing. So don't touch it. So don't. <laughs> Guys, I can't see what I'm doing, but I'm helping. I'm going to attempt to squeeze half of this grease in there. Squeeze out a little bit more. Okay. It would be like... It's like that. Like that. Okay. All right, now we gotta wait. Don't push it in. We have to make sure the boot is on. Is that good enough? I hope so. Let's we'll see. Okay, put it in the gearing thing. Pretty sure it is. It's no, in? The hole over there. Oh no, you mean, oh, put it in the, like, put yeah. it. You're talking, about, you're talking about my end? Bro, into the hub. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were talking about, like, push it all the way in on your side. This guy. What? Be quiet. Just have it resting there. Yeah, microphone. Yep, it's in? Yeah, yep. it's in. So uh, I just basically stuck this on and I felt around and I shoved this boot around as far as it could go. And I don't know if there's a certain place where it's supposed to sit, but we're gonna go for safe than sorry. And I shoved it down as far as it would go. Not as far as it would go, but it's, it's sitting evenly now, so. I went from the sides over here, I went underneath to see if it was straight. Couldn't really see, I used my phone to see. So now I'm gonna try to get that clamp onto this boot. Don't know how I'm gonna do that, but that's the next step. When you're doing this, it's very important that you bend this circle as small as possible because the looser it is, the more it's gonna work against you. So I basically looped it really hard against my fist and then I put it on and when I went to go hook it up, I tried to make sure that the hook was gonna pull itself into the holes instead of just sitting there. A lot of feeling around, going under the car, putting your hands around the subframe, but it's tight now. So now we're just gonna maneuver it carefully and tighten it down. I don't know how to use this. Oh my God, it popped out. Huh? That's you eyed over here? Barely! Barely! This is definitely not the recommended way to do this. Oh, 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 oh. Uh. He's too fat, he's too fat. <laughs> Adam, move. Completely dismantled. <coughs> I took so, its teeth off. So we took the teeth off of the snap ring tool that you saw previously in this video. Oh my god, it worked! And it worked to tighten down the clamp. Dude! The thing a key. So... The clamp ended up up here. That was the only way, when we were messing with it, fiddling it with the got it tight, that was the only place that a tool was gonna reach so we could clamp that down. But if you look at our, our CV axle tool, this thing is very long. So when we tried sticking it in there, it kept hitting stuff. It kept hitting the straw, the brake line, this, that, and the third. We were trying needle noses, other stuff like that. And then Aki said, how about we use the snap ring tool? The conventional method is obviously to have a tool that's like coming straight down onto your, your clamp, but we had to do it from the side. So what we did is there's a little metal holder and then there's that thing that holds your snap ring. So we just took both those pieces off. This thing was short enough. I got it onto there like that. And then I, I just sandwiched it and it tightened the clamp down. So I'll give it one more snug and then this axle is done. The most we'll see garage way possible. One star auto body approved. <laughs> Let's not have that in our video before we like Editor, cut that out. <laughs> Editor, please. Yo, bro, that Adam, was... how much is in there? Oh, there's a, there, I mean, there's a lot in the front. So the cup on the transmission has like grooves. There's grooves and then it sticks out in some places. So if you look at the boot, the tripod bearing and the boot, boot has that space to compensate for that groove in there and the tripod bearing sits in them. So that's how you have to have that, even though that's kind of common sense, but just saying, you know, common sense isn't so common these days. Especially if you buy a Fiat. Oh, yo, he's coming at you viewers. Roast them in the comments. Well, I'm not coming at the viewers. He drives a silver B8 Audi. B8.5, excuse you. And I got a big forehead. Nope. I don't even know how you got it wrong last time, but you got it first try, so. It's in. You know what? That's not as hard as uh, as I expected it to be. That side is pretty smooth, too. I guess those grooves help you install it. Yeah. Wait, is that clamp like a closed circle? No, it's not, right? What do you uh, mean? Clamp? Yeah. You guys probably already understand the issue, but basically, other clamps started out open, and you got to close them manually. This one's already closed. Adam, relax. Adam, 
Adam, Adam, Adam, Adam. Oh no. Adam, 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 Adam. Okay. Carefully put it back. Oh, you're gonna put grease everywhere. You're putting grease everywhere. You're putting grease everywhere. You're putting grease everywhere. Putting grease everywhere. Oh, okay, so you're unable to do it now, but you're unable to. No, no, no. No, no, I can do it. Plus, help me get this damn boot on. Uh, there's rust in my ear. <laughs> Where are these micro pumps, bro? Is that you in bed? Okay, so our clamp from, uh, what was it, Advance? Yeah. Advance is just the right size, so we don't have to do any fiddling or anything. We just nope. shove it on there and then clamp it. Yep. Yeah, I could go through the methodology of how I figured out the size, but <laughs> let's just say we got lucky. When Awas had the other boot, I went ahead and I grabbed the clamp that we put on the other side before it was like tightened, made it into a circle, and then I measured the diameter. And the one at Advanced Auto had the same exact diameter that we needed, so I was like, okay, that should work. Because I didn't see any other clamps, like the ones that we have with the multi like holes and the hooks. It was just that, so I'm like, okay, we have to get the exact size or nothing. Yeah, we're good all around. Use the snap ring tool and clamp that down, and it's it's on there now, so both that is both the axles installed all we have to do is put these axle nuts on both sides and then this car is the drivetrain is fully connected if you're doing the axle nuts it's a 36 millimeter thin wall socket order from amazon before order. you do this order it we don't have that we only have a chrome one that looks to be thinner but we're probably gonna have to shave it down but that's an issue for another time That'll be it for this video. That's how I rebuilt my CV axles and my Abarth. I'm pretty sure this process applies for any other CV axle and any other car. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has any videos for the Fiat 500. The fact that I got myself into this little pickle with not taking the axles off completely, I'm sure someone will be able to relate or someone can do it this way if they want to. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. If you want to see the big turbo Abarth come back to life, subscribe.